To really understand Raskolnikov and his mental psychology in crime and punishment, we have to look at his relationship, most specifically with his mother, with his past, and see why there remains the primary motive for Raskolnikov's actions of murder. Just like psychoanalytics, in this brief yet comprehensive analysis, I will attempt in this video to use Freudian terms to help bridge the gap between literature and psychology. Make sure to visit thoughtsonthinking.org where you can find our close-knit union of thinkers and to sign up to our newsletter. Raskolnikov is very much a split character in Dostoevsky's Crime and Punishment, hence for the name Raskolnikov, which means schizomatic. He is very poor and a failing law student in St. Petersburg who is in dire straits on the financial front. He relies on his mother and sister to send him money to allow the continuation of his studies and essentially his survival. His mother comes across as caring in the sense that she desires for him to become something mighty, a great man through his intellectual pursuits. Interests and desires become latent when financial problems start to occur, thus his mother and sister continue on in the process of sacrifice. His sister, out of complete passion for her brother, takes upon an engagement for a supposed marriage with a sadistic man called Luzin, which will help give Raskolnikov further financial support. We come to learn that the mother in this story, and from the perspective of Raskolnikov, is essentially a narcissist. She is an all-consuming character, whereby Raskolnikov, for them, is supposed to be their source of protection and glory, but instead they are making terrible sacrifices for him and he is impotent to them. Their sacrifices make him feel like more of a failure and put him under even greater pressure to fulfil their lofty dreams. This entire rage towards his family manifests primarily in the letter which his mother sends to him. His reaction of the letter gives him, I quote, a bitter angry smile, because it puts him in an unbearable position of financial despair, and their desired dreams of him becoming, I quote, rich, respected, honoured, and that he may, I quote, may even die famous by his mother's wishes. In a strange psychological sense, we can see that the mother is essentially narcissistic and relies on Skornikov's potential success for her own happiness. Pulkiria falls into long spells, I quote, of dismal brooding silence and speechless tears, and whereby she too talks of her son, of her hopes, of the future, that he is trying to, I quote, give her a moment of pleasure. With this narcissism and reliance on the mother's side, we can estimate that since birth, Pulkiria has essentially not allowed Raskolnikov to develop separation, detachment, or individualism. Because the mother continues to rely on him to be successful, not for his own sake, but for hers. This shows that there is a strange psychological complex between these two characters. We can see that the sister's altruistic sacrifices are out of strong compassion for her brother, but Bulkiria's, his mother, are more out of self-interest. This essential interaction and broodening of such events is what I believe starts to formulate the Freudian death drive for Skolnikov, which is opposite of the life drive, which is to express behaviours of repetitive aggression and eventual self-destruction. This desire of potential Napoleon superiority, which he always goes on about in the book, by violating the traditional morality and becoming the mighty great man his mother wants him to be becomes possible in his mind when eventually coming across and confronting the pawnbroker. When trying to make as much money as possible, Raskolnikov comes across Alonya, the pawnbroker. She is this horrible, nasty woman, but also someone who beats and mentally degrades her stepsister, Lizavita, who is of intellectual incapacity. She is represented as a very timid and meek girl, while Alonya is very demanding and cruel. These are the two people that he murders. Therefore, it makes no surprise that the repression of rage that Raskolnikov develops against his mother eventually manifests towards the pawnbroker. That the pawnbroker is a symbolic representation of his mother, and that Lizavita is also a symbolic representation of his timid, meek self, which he is trying to overcome. This Freudian defence system of repression eventually turns into displacement and therefore murder. But there are many cooperative impulses at work which cause such an outcome, such as rage against the mother, the desire for becoming a superior man, and of course financial insecurity, are all motivators of such an action. 
Raskolnikov deludes himself in the book into thinking that the murders were a means of testing out his Napoleonic theory of superiority, that the murders were a way of determining whether he was, I quote, a man or a louse, like everyone else. This is also a psychological realisation of his self-hatred and contempt. I quote, I wanted to murder for my own sake, for myself alone. It wasn't to help my mother. I didn't do the murder to gain wealth and power. Did I murder the old woman? I murdered myself, not her. Crushed myself once and for all, forever. End quote. Another aspect of Raskolnikov's behaviour is that it is crammed with manifestations of infantile dependence. This is no surprise and can be used as another example of how the mother did not let him develop full independence due to her narcissistic tendencies of reliance and self-interest. Raskolnikov expects others to take care of him and when they fail to do so, he, in another Freudian perspective, performs regression. He does not eat or change his clothes or seek out the company of others. After all, his very presence in St. Petersburg is caused by his mother and sister. Napoleonic theory of superiority, which is also something his mother gave of slight influence, projection of his hatred, denial of his own insecurities and dependence, emotional transference, contempt and self-hatred formulated by a narcissistic mother and causing emotional deprivation, and finally financial insecurity, all motivate the death drive within Raskolnikov and thus cause the two murders which he commits. You can also say that the death of Natalia and the letter from his mother act as fundamental catalysts to this entire emotional and psychological process of disintegration. If you enjoyed this comprehensive Freudian psychological analysis of Dostoevsky's crime and punishment character Raskolnikov, make sure to like, subscribe and comment down below to get involved in the discussion. Talking about discussion, you can find a link to the Thoughts on Thinking Facebook group down below, so make sure to join if you want to get involved in conversations about philosophy, sociology, psychology and literature. Make sure to follow my social medias such as Instagram and Twitter to keep up to date with everything that is going on, and also Patreon where you can donate a minimum of $2. Lastly, a quick shout out to all my patrons, thank you to Daniel Kazmi, The Truthism, Noah, Shahad, John, Bizham, Richard and Walter for supporting me on Patreon. Thanks for watching and I will speak to you in the next video.